Hey team, Brown Coat here from Cora Cottage, and I'm bringing you a bit of an unusual beast. I haven't done one of these before, uh, and that is a, a revisit of a review that I did uh, earlier this year, and it's for uh, Shadow of War. Now, unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably seen somewhere on the internet that Warner Brothers and Monolith Studios are releasing, or have released, a massive patch which is completely changing the economy of this game. Now, the economy in this game, and particularly the loot box systems, uh, were an issue at launch. And this is what I said in my original review. Now, Shadow of War has dropped, and pretty good reviews from the general press. Not so flash from gamers in the community, and that is because of its loot box systems. And the loot box systems are deeply embedded in the game systems which is a bit of an issue. So, out and out, in the original review, loot boxes and the way that they affected the economy within the game and the grind that they created um, was a big issue. And I'm gonna come out and say it, that the gumption of Monolith and Warner Brothers to just completely remove them is, is a big call and I give them credit for doing it um, because gamers are pretty clear now we don't like the loot boxes um, but that's not where they stopped there is literally too much to list uh, in terms of changes in this patch update now they've got some paid DLC story content um, which you know you got to pay money for and all that sort of stuff but the actual update itself has completely rebalanced the financial economy how you get orcs how often they appear there's all sorts of fixes, like literally, there's pages and pages of notes on the Warner Brothers website, and I'll chuck a link in the description below. Definitely take a read if you're curious. But suffice this to say, as a developer, they've clearly listened, and they've come in and made some sweeping changes. And as I've said, I've got to give them credit for it, because a lot of developers won't. Now, if you... Uh, in the situation of watching this review, then chances are you probably dismissed this fa game first time around. You're looking to see, is it worth my time um, on the second go? Well, it, it probably is, but then there's some qualification in there. Price-wise, it's not a new release title anymore. So I think on the PlayStation website at the moment, if you haven't got PS Plus, in New Zealand it's about 80 or 90 bucks. I'll chuck a screen grab in here when I actually do this uh, video up. I think if you've got PS Plus, I think it's even 59 or 60 bucks, something like that, which is pretty cheap. And I, I roughly converting it to US, it's probably going to be in the realms of 30 bucks. Now, when you put that in the context of what content is on offer, the changes to the economy to make the game friendlier for everyone to use. And then there's a lot of DLC for you to chew through if you actually really buy into the game world. Um, I reckon that it's a pretty good cost-benefit analysis, if you like. It's it's There is a lot of benefit to be had for not a lot of financial outlay. It's a big AAA game that's had some big changes to make it friendlier um, for gamers. It's not hugely unusual now. Division and things have all gone through massive changes. But it's unusual for a single player game to get such a swath of changes. Um, what I'll do is just chuck in here what I thought about the game when it officially got released. And um, then I'll come back to you. To me, the game itself is massive. But it's bloaty. It's had a AAA development budget thrown at it with lots of... what can be put down to meaningless tasks put out there to fulfill the world up where the core combat is still slick and beautiful it's the ultimate power fantasy fulfilled but it's not a huge change from shadow of mordor the 2014 title and to my mind it's the better game Alrighty, so that's what I said in my original review uh, at the start of the year. And bearing in mind, I held off on that review by a good month or so to see if we were going to get some big patches and big updates. So now that we've had this big change and update, do those comments or, or does that summary still hold water? Um, part of me says yes, part of me says no. 
So yes, I think the game is still bloaty. It's got a lot of extra stuff in there, busy work, um, which I'm not a big fan of, but for a gamer who wants to get value for money, there is a lot to do in this world. I personally think that the original Mordor game was a more refined experience and it was closer to those Arkham games where combat was really the driving force, where now the Nemesis system and the Orcs are the driving force in, in the, um, this updated title. But if I'm going to put a pin in it, I would say if you can pick this game up cheap, get it. It's a big budget AAA game and they've fixed a lot of the big complaints that gamers had. Loot boxes, bad economy, that kind of thing. It's been fixed and I want to give the, the developers and the publisher credit. They've listened and they've done a big free update. It's a shame that we have to get to the stage where they try and get money out of us in all different ways and then they finally learn that hey look we're not going to accept that but they could have just let the game die and move on to the next thing they haven't they've um, given us a, a much bigger game with a higher level cap and better XP um, systems it's a bigger and better game than it was when it launched and if you can get it for half the value of the original purchase price do it do it I reckon it's a good game all right Look, I'll leave you to it. Um, I uh, would ask if you want to get the full context of this summary, make sure you check out the full review that I did. Um, it's on the channel in the reviews uh, playlist. And uh, give us a like or a subscribe. And even pop over to corycottage.com and check out some of our other reviews. All right, thanks for dropping by.